So this is a talk about my video and security system. Um, you might have heard the term NVR, or network video recorder. You can either have on-premise NVRs or cloud NVRs, or maybe you can buy a camera that comes with cloud recording feature. You can buy such things. I wanted to build one. So what I wanted was some cameras in my house, and I wanted something super cheap, like a Raspberry Pi, that slurped the video off the cameras, uploaded it to the cloud, and then I processed it there. So I want low, low, low and I also want notifications to Telegram when there's motion. So I wanted notifications on movement, very low latency within a couple seconds, off-site storage and CPU, I don't want to have servers in my house, and you know, buffer the data and send me notifications. So first, the video slurper. Um, it turns out most of these cameras speak RTSP, RTP, which is a weird mix of UDP and TCP, but I didn't want to do that to the internet. So I want to slurp it from here and send normal HTTP to the internet with the, with the video. So what format to like slurp this and move it around? At first I thought motion JPEG, which a lot of cameras support, which is literally just like JPEGs concatenated over and over and over again in multi-part MIME. Uh, it's simple, it's easy to parse, but it's gigantic bandwidth-wise. Um, I could just do RTSP RTP all the way to the cloud, but it's just a pain because it's uh, UDP and stuff, and I really just wanted to deal with HTTP. So I found the holy grail of file formats for video. There's something called MPEG transport stream. It has a spec. There's fields, but you can ignore it all. Because the, <laughs> cause the key point of the spec is that every packet is 188 bytes long, always. Which means, um, I'll show you why that's important, but there's packages in Godoc to kind of read RTSP, RTP, or make MPEG TS, but let's just use FFmpeg because this is a quick weekend hack. Um, so you can use RFFmpeg input. You give it the RTSP, RTP, UDP mess. It deals with it, and you say, don't transcode the audio or video, just, just repackage it as MPEG TS, which is, remember, these 188 byte packets. Um, how are we gonna use FFmpeg from Go? We could use CGO, but as Dave Cheney says, CGO is not Go, and I don't like things that aren't Go. Um, so let's use the OS exec package, it's really great. You should buy the author a beer. Um, <laughs> so what we're gonna do is run FFmpeg as a child process, having it slurp from the camera, and then spit out this MPEG transport stream to standard out, which is just these little 188 byte packets. Then we have a buff IO reader, we have a ticker every second, and then we basically just read these 188 byte packets, writing it to this file, and every one second the timer fires the ticker, and we rotate the log file, and we upload that one to the cloud. This has the nice property that you could just concatenate all these TS files together, and that's a valid TS file, as long as you cut it on 188 byte, 188 byte boundaries. So let's look at an intruder into my house. Um, <laughs> let's see if this loads. So here he comes. <laughs> so <laughs> So we're going we're going to catch that intruder. So first that's recorded by the camera and we're going to talk about we've uploaded this now to the cloud and we want to process it. So the cloud part is going to receive these HTTP posts every one second with a chunk of video, store like a rolling buffer of the stuff, detect motion and when there's motion stitch it together, send it in jilt you know, send a GIF to Telegram or MP4 to Telegram and a GIF on the web. So for decoding the, pixel, so decoding the pixels to get the, uh, the raw video to like do motion detection on, we just do the inverse. We pipe into FFmpeg the, uh, the video, we have it scale, and we have it say raw video out. So that will be just piping raw pixels out to standard out. And then we read it and go um, just like this. We make a big buffer to read the pixels into, and then you could just use it with like the image.gray or image.rgba. Um, but to do motion detection, first we have to talk about edge detection. When I first started working on this, I tweeted this picture of me, building security systems is fun. Um, somebody replied and said that looks uncanny because he was referring to the canny edge detector I was using. Uh, uh, there are Go packages on godoc.org to do canny, um, but since I'm already using FFmpeg, might as well just use its, and so just add edge detect. Um, so now you get stuff like this. Um, and so here's the video of, Go for coming to break into my house again. Yeah, you get the point. So how does that help? Um, what you can do is for every frame, compare the edges from that frame with the edges of the previous frame, and do this all in Go. And now instead of that, you have something like this. And then, yeah, there's the video of him breaking in. Just 
And then you can just count the number of changed pixels. It's really trashy, but it, it works surprisingly, flow, surprisingly well. So I might use TensorFlow in the future for class, I'm classifying a corpus of false positives and good things and bugs and actual humans, and I might train a model. But for now, I just, while there's motion, I record 10 seconds before and 30 seconds after or something, and I upload a concatenate from the file, change the container format to MP4, send to Telegram, um, make GIFs, push them around, and I can find a dude stealing my mail at 2 in the morning. So but let's end on a happier note. That's about all of it. There's also, um, here's people not breaking into my house, but you know, taking out the trash and stuff. So that's fun. Anyway, that's all.